This week on The Modified World, we're going to talk a little bit about stone body jewelry. So stay tuned. So welcome to The Modified World, the weekly web show about body modification, the people who do it, the people who get it. And why it matters. I'm your host, senior piercer at the world-renowned Pangea Piercing and the purveyor of all this internet wackiness, JC Potts. And this week, we're going to be talking a little bit about stone body jewelry. First thing I'm going to say is the study of stone is known as geology. And it's a branch of science in its own right. So if you think that I'm going to be able to get as in-depth as a geologist in this video, then I'm sorry, you're crazy. I'm not a geologist. I'm a body piercer. That said, though, I will be more than happy to share with you what I've gleaned in my 18-something years of messing around with this stuff. First thing we're going to talk about is design. Mostly you're looking at hangers, plugs, and variations thereof, like single flare versus double flare, teardrops, and all the various hanging shapes. The other thing is material. Now, there's a few really, really common materials that you're going to see over and over again. Things like hematite, unikite, amethyst, fluorite, various agates, various jaspers, various types of quartz. Sodalite, aventurine, jade, turquoise, obsidian, and the various synthetic and glass products that get passed off as stone. But don't worry, we will get back to that later. One of the biggest varieties of stone you're going to find is agate. There's lots of different types of agate. It's a silica-based metamorphic stone, and agate has an unusual quality of being able to be polished to a very, very, very high luster and retain that polish. Historically, agates were used for burnishing metals and leather. Burnishing is just rubbing something with something hard until it brings out a gloss. It's kind of like polishing, but instead of polishing, you're just flattening. So you'll see the crazy lace agate, Tibetan agate, blue lace agate. Red agate is also known as carnelian. You'll see all those very commonly. And I've never heard of anybody having any kind of problem with them or anything like that. One of the other chief varieties you're going to see is Jasper. Once again, Jasper is a type of silica and it's a metamorphic stone. Typically doesn't polish as bright as you will get with an agate. But it still can be polished down to a very high luster. And, you know, depending on what other minerals it came in contact with, it can have all kinds of different colors and appearances and stuff like that. You will see lots of quartz. Quartz is a very hard, usually fairly clear stone. It presents in a number of different ways depending on, once again, what sort of minerals it came into contact with during its formation. You'll often see it like clear or pink, which is called rose quartz. This nice smoky, whiskey colored quartz. Or this semi-precious gemstone variety called rutilated quartz has little needles of rutile shot through the stone. It makes it really, really pretty. There's a version of that with black needles through it. It's called tourmalinated quartz. Ooh, and that's hot stuff. And I don't have a piece of it to show you, unfortunately. Obsidians. You see a lot of different types of obsidian stones out there. Obsidian is a volcanic glass. Conditions are right when the lava comes out and it actually forms into a, a glassine product, which is pretty awesome because it's an all natural glass. There are different treatments that you'll find with stones. Sometimes they heat them to change the color, like these tiger eye pieces over here. Natural tiger eye is this yellow. Now, with different heat treatments, you can get a nice red or blue cast to it. Earlier I spoke a little bit about products that get commonly sold as the wrong stuff. The worst offender is probably turquoise. You see a whole lot of stuff sold as turquoise. Real turquoise looks like this. 
it's the color of a robin's egg and it's got these little inclusion lines all the way through it now the thing is with real turquoise is it's a semi-precious gemstone and it's kind of expensive and you don't usually find very big pieces of it especially very big pieces of it that match so you're not going to very often find matching sets of plugs in large sizes made from real turquoise You'll commonly see this stuff over here, which is some aggregate that's made out of, you know, it's some sort of stone mixed with plastic. You can buy slabs of it in China. Google is your friend. Go ahead and look it up. Synthetic turquoise slabs. You see quite a few glass products sold as obsidian. Now, yes, obsidian is glass, but it's a naturally formed glass where this stuff right here wasn't naturally formed. It was formed in some factory somewhere now does that make it bad no but does it make it real obsidian no it doesn't there's a bit of a price difference too on those so you can imagine that it might be a deal that you might want to pay attention to what you're buying you'll see a lot of dyed green stones sold as aventurine or jade held up next to real jade and real aventurine the differences are apparent and of course, there's a price difference. These over here can be bought in any mall in America for under $20. These right here huh, are not gonna be bought in a mall for under $20. Which brings us around to the other common synthetic stones. You see all the time this clear blue stuff over here sold as opalite or opal stone or what have you. And it's clearly not a stone, it's actually a piece of glass. Once again, is there anything wrong with that? No. You just need to know that it's not a natural product. Same way with this stuff over here. Sold as gold stone, but once again, not a stone. It's a glass product. They've been making it for hundreds of years. And it's pretty cool, but once again, it's not a real stone. Interestingly enough, I always love it when you get the, the people that are all into the crystals and the vibrations and they come in and they talk i've actually had people talk about how they can feel positive vibrations off of the gold stone and i love shattering their little world when you tell them that it was made by some italian guy named giuseppe vibe on that hippie last thing i'm going to talk about is price there's a huge variation in price on stone body jewelry and a lot of factors factor in one of them is material. Is it some sort of dyed stuff? Is it some sort of synthetic product? Or is it an actual natural stone? Is it a rare natural stone? All these are gonna bear in on the price. Design counts for a lot too. When you see something that's poorly cut with a harsh, sharp flare, well, they're not gonna be able to sell that for as much as something that was properly designed that people will look at and say, oh, well, I don't think I can wear that. So that will play in. How much they match will play in too. If you got a pair that doesn't really resemble one another, well, even if it's the same species of stone, it's pretty tough to sell them, so naturally the price is according. You got some really hot stuff that looks great, perfectly matching, of course it's gonna go for a little bit more. Reflectivity is gonna count in for a lot. When you look at Labradorite, it's a fairly common stone and a lot of times can be had very affordably. Sometimes you're gonna see some that's really expensive though. The really affordable Labradorite is gonna look like this. You know, not ugly, but there's not a lot of flash to it or anything. A quality pair of Labradorite plugs is gonna have like a gemstone-like flash to it, full of reds and blues and greens and yellows and all that kind of stuff, which naturally adds to the value. These can be had over here for pretty affordably. These over here, not so much. There's a, a greater degree of skill that runs into making a quality pair of Labradorite plugs. It's not just a matter of getting the flares right, getting the size right. It's also a matter of cutting it to where the light is actually going to hit it correctly. Synthetic Malachite, which to be honest with you, I've always known Malachite to not be good to actually wear in contact with the body. It has a really, really high copper content. Now, this pair right here, the synthetic malachite is actually set into a wooden plug, so it's not actually touching your skin. But I have seen synthetic malachite plugs. What's it made out of? Hell if I know. Would I wear it? No. 
Would I sell it to my clients? No. Wear it at your own risk. I don't know what to tell you. I know some of you guys are going to be asking about the weight of these things. We will notice in a lot of the larger sizes, they're either concaved a little bit to thin them out in the middle and reduce the weight, or they'll just be hollow, which reduces the weight. But I really wouldn't worry so much about it because in the larger sizes, of course, too, if you've been stretching properly, then you should have no problem because it spreads that weight over a larger surface area. So what would be too heavy to hang on a quote unquote normal earring, you know, in a one inch plug is no problem. So don't worry too much about it. Not only that, but the extra weight and heft of stone plugs can help a stubborn piercing that doesn't want to stretch kind of open up to the next size just through the weight of it alone. Now I'm not saying to go weight your ears down to get them to stretch, but I am saying it works. So that was our show this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something or at least were remotely entertained with my various wacky antics. We give away swag every week to engage subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to and leave me a comment in the section down below. Tell me, what could I do to make this video more educational, interesting? You like my suit? Let me know in the section down below. And be sure to share this video on your Tumblr, your Facebook, your Twitter, your Google Plus if you have one. And of course, stop back by next week for yet another episode of The Modified World. Wamp, 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 wamp